It took me three days, three flights, three countries to get where I am in Juba, South Sudan. Now in Juba, you can't photograph in the city. And so I've been shooting a little bit of video from a moving van. There's very few places I've traveled where it's forbidden to take photographs out on the street. And as I'm being driven through the very, very densely populated the city of Juba. I see all these photos I want to shoot, and yet I can't. I'm traveling with my good friend, Shen Campion, and we're on a grand adventure. We're here to photograph a very traditional tribe out in the hinterlands, and we'll find out what the Mandari tribe are all about. The one thing I know is we're going to get some great shots of these giant white cows, very tall, slender, dark skinned folks. The contrast will be brilliant. And at this time of the year, there's a lot of rain and rain then means mosquitoes. And to combat all the mosquitoes, they build fires, which creates this beautiful atmospheric environment from which these cows, dark skinned people will create a beautiful painting like atmosphere. And that's what we're after primarily here in the South Sudan where there's not a lot of tourists. We're gonna have the entire, probably 2,000 cows and the, the tribal members all to ourselves, which is great. There'll be no distractions other than the heat, the bugs, and the rain. I'm approaching this cattle company but as you can see there's no cows well okay there's a couple calves but right now we're gonna try to do some portraits while the men are kind of just sitting around talking later on as all the big cows come streaming back into this camp they're gonna be distracted so now's the time to shoot portraits my trick here is to shoot very parallel shots. So I'm just trying to make a design out of his face because he's got V-shaped scarification on his forehead. Okay, and looking right here. Just, yeah. Now with the ash on his face, it's really nice because you can see the scarification. Okay, one more time. Hello. Right there. Perfect. Got it. Nice. The color of their hair and how they get the color of their hair is so unique. And then they put this ash mixed with cow dung and fire and it makes their skin look so different, almost ghostly. So the combination of redheads, which are very unique in Africa, and how they're so compliant and allowing us to photograph these uh, really intimate scenes, cameras in their face, is another unique thing. Great guys to work with. There's no other people here other than the Mandari, our gracious guide from Uganda, and Shem, my travel partner. And most of the day we're hiding under trees out of the heat. We're only shooting for an hour in the morning, and as it turns out, an hour and a half at night. As you can see, we filled, and the cattle camp is filled up with cows, yeah. And it really becomes intense, there's muddy underfoot, so it makes the working quite dangerous. The challenge with white cows on a sunny day is the contrast of light and dark. On an overcast day and there's been a lot of clouds on the horizon, it makes my job a little easier but still it's about finding a really tight graphic composition and that's my challenge.
came for. Amazing graphic, ethereal shots in these cattle camps run by the Mandari people. Okay, you guys be quiet while I'm talking, okay? tent right now and torrential rains are happening outside and it's in the middle of the day but it's so dark and I've had to uh, close up the tent because everything would get soaked so the good news is it's probably gonna abate in an hour or so and it will provide really soft light for photographing the goats the dogs and more importantly the cows and the mandari people you know the care and attention that these guys give to their cattle is unparalleled it's unbelievable they clean the horns they detick them they rub the ash on them and wash them you can't not photograph the care and the attention and the love if you want to call it that that these guys give to their cows One of the challenges of working with the Mandari is following them from camp to camp. As the cows eat the vegetation in one area, they're often moving to the next camp, and we follow them like a game of cat and mouse. We'll be following them for one more day, and then we'll head back to Juba. Hopefully you've enjoyed the second of these video diaries. We'll see you next time.